Stick Book Volume 1 is a comprehensive method book based on Emma Chapman's free hands, two-handed tapping method of parallel hands. It covers everything from basic warm-up exercises, chords in both hands, bass lines, scales, melody, independence training, and two-handed interdependent play to expressive techniques. The first few chapters concentrate on developing tapping skills in the left and right hands individually. And then in Chapter 5, we start to put things together, working on two-handed independence. Chapter 6 is all about melodic navigation, learning how to feel the key all over the board, not just in individual hand positions. Chapter 7 is about two-handed interdependent grooves, and Chapter 8 focuses on two-handed bass technique. Chapter 9 is all about applying various expressive techniques, like vibrato, bending, muting, sliding, hammer-ons, pull-offs, and harmonics. With Emma Chapman's free hands, two-handed tapping method, one player can make a lot of music. To try to show all the pitches, rhythms, placement, and fingerings using tablature or standard notation alone would just be impossible. Staff Tab combines standard music notation with tablature elements and Emmett's original finger symbols from his free hands lessons book. To convey all the information needed to finger the music, including the pitch, rhythm, fingering, and note placement. Each note is defined as it would normally be on the grand staff, like in piano music, but it's written an octave higher than the actual pitch, similar to the way guitar and bass music is written. So this note is the bass low E. Uh, we show which finger plays this note by changing the shape of the note head. Uh, now I'm going to play the note with the second finger, so we change it to the diamond shape. If I played it with the third finger, it would be the triangle. Fourth finger, square. First finger is a perfect circle instead of the angled oval that we normally see in notation. To indicate where the note is played, we place a fret number below the staff, and then we can superimpose 10 strings of the stick onto the 10 lines of the staff to show which string is used to play the note. Other than these three elements, the finger symbols, fret numbers, and string markers, the notation follows all the rules of standard music notation as far as rhythm and key are concerned. If you're not a good reader of standard notation, you can just read the fret numbers and string markers to know where to put your fingers. Most of the exercises in the book don't involve tricky rhythms, so they're pretty easy to follow. In the years since I wrote the book, I've learned a lot about how to teach the physical aspects of the free hands method, specifically having to do with hand movement and position shifting. So I'd like to take a few minutes to show you how that applies to the lessons you'll find in the stick book. So the key to playing repeated notes is to shift your hands up and down the board rather than keeping them in one static position. In order to get the notes to sound smooth and with a consistent volume, I shift my whole hand up and down the board by one fret position. So when I'm playing the note with my first finger, that finger is on the 11th fret. But when I play the note with my second finger, the first finger is positioned over the 10th fret. So the energy from shifting the hand along the board is what drives the notes. not an up and down typing motion, which is typical for fretting strings. So here's the first line of the exercise. So you can hear that the notes have the same kind of an attack whether I'm playing them with my first, second, or third finger. In the next line, we play half steps with adjacent fingers. And here's where using the broader technique of hand movement becomes really valuable. We can use that same shifting motion along the string to drive the notes, which will give us a consistent tone whether we're going up the string or going down the string. So here's the line. So I'm using a little bit of finger energy, but more hand motion along the string, too. So the next line of the exercise, I'm going to play whole steps using the first and second fingers, and then the second and third fingers also. So it sounds like this. One, two, ready, go. And 
notice how I'm not keeping my fingers in position over the fret. When I release them, I'm actually shifting them out of position. So that hand motion along the string is what drives the rhythm. And what also means I don't have to release the note consciously. The motion takes care of it for me. My thumb is just shifting just a little bit on the back of the instrument as I go. Again, I don't want to stretch my fingers out. I want to keep my hand nice and relaxed. When you apply these same motion concepts to the left hand, it becomes clear why free hands can be such a powerful playing method. Even with the different tunings, the movement of the hand along the strings provides a unifying technique element that makes the hands equal partners. So in the first line, we're going to use a shift down in pitch toward the nut to play the second note, then up in pitch toward the bridge to play the note with the first finger again. So here I'm playing F, then I play it with my second finger, and watch how my hand shifts back along the string. Up, back, up, back, up, back, up in pitch, down in pitch. So here's how the first measure looks. And then we go to the second measure, we shift even further to play with the third finger, and then back with the fourth finger even further. Two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, to wind it up. So let me turn sideways and show you how it looks from the side so you can see the thumbs movement. It's a lot easier than trying to rotate your hand around this way and it gives you a much cleaner sound. Uh, you can play much smoother. Now we're going to play half steps on the next line, and again, even though uh, these fingers are adjacent to each other, and you could play it like this, try to get some hand motion into it, so you can see I'm not keeping my second finger in its spot right behind the fret, and I don't have to keep my first finger right here either, I can keep my hand nice and relaxed, so it goes like this, one, two, ready, go. And the hand motion helps even out the volume of the fingers too, because your pinky is not very strong. So reinforcing that movement with the hand is going to really help it get just as good a sound as you're going to get out of the other fingers. Uh, the next line is whole steps, so it goes like this, one, two, ready, go. And what you'll notice is, as I'm moving, that's a big, big reach, a whole step. I could keep my fingers stretched out, but that would be wasting a lot of energy. So I'm just going to shift my hand along the board, just like I have been. First and third finger, and then it goes second and fourth finger for the last two. And again, the hand motion really helps. So instead of going like this, which uses a lot of energy in your forearm. It doesn't sound as consistent. That's going to give you a lot more strength and consistency by supplementing the power of your fingers with the movement of the arm. Now the last line of the exercise uh, actually uses the scale positions uh, for a D minor scale. So here's where the notes would be in the scale. So I'm going to play the first and third fingers on these notes and the second and fourth fingers on these notes. One, two, ready, go. You'll notice when I played that uh, note with the pinky twice at the top, I'm reinforcing the pinky with my hand instead of going like this. The hand stays relaxed, and uh, it's used more like a hammer. The whole hand is a hammer hitting down the note. Once you can play them as consistently as possible, then you can try using uh, different dynamics, for example, or a different kind of an articulation. Uh, even changes the rhythm. Or add a bass note underneath. Which turns it into an independence exercise. 
Uh, all these things are going to take your mind off of the mechanics of the fingering and put them on the, the broader musical picture, which I think is a really good thing to pursue when you're practicing. Try to be as musical as possible all the time. Uh, this one outlines a bass line through some simple chord changes, uh, mostly based on the chord tones of uh, major chords, uh, G major, C major, and D major. Uh, and it teaches your hand how to feel the common intervals in chords like major thirds and minor thirds. Uh, and uh, once again, you'll want to keep the hand relaxed and move the thumb with the hand rather than anchoring it in one position. So I'll count it in. It's in 6-8. 1, 2, This exercise illustrates how position shifting in the right hand expands the number of notes available to you at any given time. Uh, follow the fingerings carefully. Some of them might be kind of unexpected, but they set up what comes next. One, two, three, go. If you need a little more help understanding the rhythms, or just want a little extra practice aid, you can get the Stickbook Companion CD, which has all the notated exercise with the metronome count-off at very reasonable tempos for those just learning how to play the pieces for the first time. The bass and melody parts are panned hard left and hard right, so you can work on one hand at a time. Here are a couple of examples of tracks from the CD. Uh, I'll play along and show you the chart as well. Uh, the first one deals with what I call poly patterns. Um, these are where different patterns of different lengths are played in each hand at the same time. This exercise focuses on vibrato in the left hand, and it also uses some sliding chords in the right hand. There are exercises and arrangements that will challenge players of every skill level in this book. I still find myself going back to it all these years later to keep refining my own playing and to come up with new ways to teach the concepts in these exercises. So I hope it'll inspire you in the same way as you make Emmett's free hands, two-handed tapping method the foundation of your own musical discoveries. Happy tapping!